I have to admit, my time with the Kiwi V302C has been interesting. And it's not hard to see why. It looks phenomenal. And there's a V-twin under there. Unfortunately though, great looks and a killer engine don't complete a bike. But let's start with the basics. This cruiser from Kiwi, like I said earlier, looks fantastic. It's butch, the LED headlights are great, and the way the tail has been styled is pretty impressive. It's safe to say that on the move, you will get noticed. People do whip their necks around just to appreciate the V302C. And while the fuel tank might look sleek and diminutive, it's actually a very, very useful 15 liters, which is not bad if you think about it for a bike of this size. Now, this could equate to about 300, maybe 325 kilometers of range, as long as you ride it sensibly. And as for the 690mm seat height, well, this is not only actually low, but it feels low once you swing a leg over and get a move on. It definitely takes a few seconds to get used to. Now, the flip side is that pretty much anyone, regardless of height, can ride this thing. And what helps in this place over here is that, well, it's 167 kilos of curb weight, so it's just easy. Now, one thing I don't get is this rear seat. I don't know who it's for or why it's there in the first place. But let me tell you about what I feel is the strongest highlight of the V302C. It's the V-twin plugging away under you. The engine is super refined, loves to rev hard and sounds absolutely divine. It makes 30 horsepower and 27 Nm is belt driven and loves to scramble at an urgent pace out of most situations. Stoplight getaways are really, really fun on this. But that's where it starts to slip away from the V302C as a number of faults begin to pop up. An eager and responsive engine is one thing, but you need stopping power to back it up and the V302C's brakes are rather inadequate. The front is mushy and gives you no confidence whatsoever, while the rears just love locking up at the slightest provocation. The saving grace is that, let's say you find yourself on a set of smooth flowing corners. The V302C is actually up to the task of letting you have a little bit of fun. The Timson tires, for instance, they're pretty grippy and after a while, once you find the limits, you can actually start leading yourself more into corners as your confidence builds. But there's a caveat to that as well. <laughs> you lean a little too much, you push a little too hard and you run the risk of scraping your foot pegs and your end can. What's also not great is the ride. It's extremely harsh and this is down to the fact that the front suspension only has 120mm of travel and there's 42mm for the rear. So potholes, bumps and the lot will have you screaming in agony after a while. The usual solution would be to stand up and let your knees absorb the bump. But thanks to the pegs being forward set and the flattish handlebar making you lean forward, this is no easy task. So you won't be able to get through longer distances without taking a breather for your back unfortunately. What I also can't get over are a few of the details along the bike. The LCD display feels a bit too basic for one. Secondly, what's with the Benda logos here and there? And isn't that an odd place to have a reservoir down there? These small gripes and issues all come together to leave you feeling slightly disappointed after a good long ride. Because when you consider the highlights, the wheat win and the fantastic looks, your expectations tend to balloon. And that's why it's a pity about the V302C. It's, it's there. The fundamental ideology behind it is sound. It's just that Kiwi needs to just plug in a few gaps and just make it a more rounded, wholesome machine. Anyway, that's my time. I'm Ronak, this is Forbes in your Momentum. And that's the weird thing, isn't it? Why is it still so desirable?